Liza, Liza, Liza. Said the Solomon Islands and China deal wasn't a surprise. Said Mr Selger says he found out when the draft leaked. So which is it? When exactly did the government find out that this deal was happening? Well, I have known for some time the risk of a deal such as this coming about. I mean, this is why the first place I went to after the last election was the Solomon Islands. And I spoke to um, Prime Minister Sogobari on that occasion about the threats and the, the, that uh, China presented to the region. And we discussed those issues back on that occasion. And there's been an ongoing dialogue over that entire time. And so we have been addressing those issues over a long period of time. That's why we further doubled down. I mentioned last night in the debate the 30 million uh, financing investment we've put in place for the Tina River transmission project. It's why we did the undersea cable. It's why we are the single largest uh, provider of overseas development assistance to the Solomon Islands. It's why we continue to lift our investment right across the Pacific. Because what has emerged as a result of this issue in the Solomon Islands is it's been able to further elevate the awareness of other Pacific Island nations who are also very concerned about this, just as Australia and New Zealand is. And as Prime Minister Ardern has said today, because we've discussed this many times, this is a matter we're looking forward to discussing with all Pacific leaders as part of the Pacific Islands Forum. So the threat of this has been around for a long time. And I can't go into all the details uh, as to how Australia is able to know the uh, specific information, because they, they are security matters. Um, but what I do know is we've always been very conscious of that threat of China being able to influence a nation in our region um, to ends such as that. And, you know, Peter Dutton, I thought, put it pretty well today. China, they don't play by the same rules as liberal, transparent democracies. This is a secret deal. And the arrangements that are there are not public. And... You know, Peter may have put it a bit more bluntly this morning, but he makes the right point that we're dealing with an autocratic nation that is not playing by the normal rules in seek how they seek to influence other nations in our region. And other countries in our region, I can assure you, are very aware of that. Now, we had a good discussion about this issue last night, as you would have seen. And I made a couple of points, and Mr Albanese took some offence to what I said to him last night. But let's just look at the record. When our relationship with China started to descend and when China was putting in place trade blocks on Australian products, wine and barley and various things like that, they said that was Australia's fault, not China's fault. When I called out China for where the pandemic started and said there had to be an, an independent investigation into the origins of COVID, apparently this was the wrong thing for us to do. They thought Labor said that Australia was at fault in calling for that, and our government was at fault for doing that. When I cancelled a submarine contract for $90 billion because it wasn't the right submarine for Australia, and I can assure you there's no easy way to cancel a $90 billion submarine contract with a friend such as France. But when France attacked Australia over that decision, they didn't side with Australia, they sided with the French government. And more recently, now we have China seeking to influence through their means, which Peter was a bit more expressive about today. Do they blame China for doing that? Or do they use it as an opportunity to attack the government? So when I look at that record, on each occasion, have they backed the Australian government in standing up for Australia? Or have they run the talking points, have they run the lines of those who are seeking to criticise Australia for the important decisions that we've taken in our national interests. Sorry. That's why I made the claim I did last night, because it's backed up by a Labor Party Sorry. who has played politics with national security, Sorry. despite their claims to the contrary. So if they're critical of you, you say they're on China's side. If they're critical of anything your government does in this space, you say, well, you must be on China's side. Is that, is that your argument? Well, Andrew, let me put it to you. Do you think the relationship with China and the fact that they have imposed trade coercion on Australia because we put in place foreign interference laws, that we put in place tougher foreign investment laws, uh, that we called them out on issues like the pandemic, do you think that was Australia's fault or do you think it was China's fault? 
So now you're lumping me in the same category. Well, you put the question. <laughs> you put the question. I'm simply saying... Prime I'm Minister, si- your, I'm narrative, saying, your narrative... I'm simply saying, Andrew, that when we've taken decisions in the national interest and when we've stood up for Australia and done the right thing for Australia, the Labor Party has joined the chorus of other countries attacking Australia. And that's just a fact. Around China. Yeah, just